Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 5. There's only so much you can do with a single particle approach to plasma physics. Once you have a lot of collisions and a lot of particles, it's computationally very lengthy to try and include all the interactions between all the particles as well as their collisions on a particle by particle basis. You'll find that there's not enough computing power to model even a few milliseconds of a plasma within a human lifetime. So from a practical point of view, we move on to a fluid description of plasmas. One of the building blocks of concepts in the fluid description of plasmas is mass and particle flux. We'll use this concept to derive one of the fundamental equations of the fluid model of plasmas known as the continuity equation. It's really a restatement of the conservation of mass equation and has this form, but we'll need to derive this and explain its meaning. Another fundamental equation of the fluid approach to plasmas is known as the momentum equation, also sometimes known as the force equation, and has this form. We'll also derive this and explain why it's sometimes referred to as the force equation. Let's start with some basic definitions of the fluid approach to plasmas. In general, a fluid is regarded as a continuous medium, characterized by a few parameters. The density, rho, but in this case, it's not the number density, it's the mass density. Nevertheless, on many occasions in plasmas, we still need to refer to the number density of the plasma. So we relate the mass density, rho, with the number density, n, and the mass of each particle, m. With collisionality comes pressure. We also use velocity as one of the parameters, but in this case, it's not the velocity of each particle in the plasma, it's the velocity of a fluid element. The final parameter is temperature. We use this parameter because in a fluid model, the plasma is regarded as highly collisional, and therefore, its velocity distribution function is most likely Maxwellian. The idea of mass flux is used in the derivation of one of the fluid equations. So let's take a closer look at mass flux. Imagine we have a volume element given by this figure where you have charged particles moving to the right. This volume has length L and cross-sectional area A. We can say that the number of particles in the box, symbolized here by capital N, is equal to the number density of particles times the volume of the box, AL. Now let's find the number of particles that leave the box in time T. We obtain this by dividing both sides by T. You'll notice that the expression L on T is nothing more than velocity V. We can say that V is the velocity of particles to the right, but as we said before, the velocity distribution could be Maxwellian. So it isn't just one velocity of the particles. The V then has to be some kind of drift velocity of the particles, or you could look at it as the velocity of the volume element containing these particles. Substituting V into the left-hand expression, we end up with the rate of particles exiting the box as NAV. Now, particle flux is the rate of particles exiting the box per unit area. So we divide the above expression by A. So it simplifies to n times v. The units are particles per unit area per unit time. Mass flux is obtained by multiplying particle flux by the mass m of each particle. So m times n is nothing more than the mass density of the fluid. And so mass flux is given by rho times v. The units are kilograms per meter squared per second. You've actually come across this idea of flux before when considering the number density in a current carrying wire. So consider electrons moving in this wire to the right through a cross-sectional area A. The current density J was given as the current I on A. But you would have also had derived the alternative expression for the current density, which is number density N times charge times drift velocity. If you'll notice, the n times v there is flux multiplied by the charge. So another name for this expression could be charge flux. Now let's use the ideas we've explored to derive the continuity equation. 
So consider a fluid flowing into and out of an infinitesimally small cube given by this. The x, y and z axes are given in this orientation. Let the rate of change of mass of fluid flowing into the cube be given by this expression with the subscript i and let the rate of change of mass flowing out of the cube be given by this expression with a subscript o. Using these two expressions we can write that the rate of change of mass in the cube is given by their difference. Mass flow rate out minus mass flow rate in. Now substitute the expressions for these. From what we found previously the mass flow rate can be written as mass flux times the area through which that flux flows. The mass flux, if you recall, is given by the density times the velocity, rho v, and the area in this case is that of one of the faces of the cube through which the fluid is flowing. Before we get the general formula for the mass flow rate, let's look at a specific case. Here the fluid flows into the cube and out of it along the y-axis through the face which has an area of dx times dz. The mass flow rate in along the y-axis is given by the mass flux in along the same axis times the area of the face of the cube through which flow occurs dx dz. We can write a similar expression for the fluid exiting the opposite face of the cube. The total mass flow into the cube dm dt is the total mass flow out of the cube minus the total mass flow into the cube. That means we have to write similar expressions as this particular case but for all the faces of the cube. There will be three faces in which the fluid flows in and three faces through which the fluid flows out. Mathematically the total mass flow rate through the cube is the mass flow rates out through the x, y and z axes minus the mass flow rates in along the x, y and z axes. Let's start rewriting the expressions into measurable quantities. The mass flow rate dm dt on the left hand side of the equation can be written in terms of density d rho dt times the volume element of the cube dx dy and dz. Similarly we can rewrite the expression on the right hand side in terms of mass flux given by this expression. So each of these expressions on the right can now be written in a more compact form such as this. Notice that a minus sign has appeared that is because we expect the mass flow rate of particles out to be less or equal to the mass of particles flowing in. It would be very odd if the rate of flow of mass out exceeded the rate of mass flow in since that would defy the conservation of mass. The minus sign would be applicable under those circumstances where the fluid is compressible where more mass flows into the cube than out of it which could happen in plasmas. If we imagine the cube now becomes infinitesimally small then we rewrite the difference in terms of this differential. Let's now make similar substitutions for the other expressions. Then divide both sides by dx, dy and dz which leads to this expression. We can now tidy up this expression by writing it in the more compact differential vector notation. This is known as the continuity equation. Finally we'll derive the momentum equation. A solution of this equation tells us how the fluid velocity changes in position and in time. Note that the fluid velocity not only depends on x, y and z but on time. The rate of change of velocity for all these four variables is given by its complete derivative which can be written in terms of its partials which are given on the right hand side. Note that dx dt, dy dt and dz dt are nothing more than the velocity components along the x, y and z directions. We can write this equation in a more compact vector notation. This is known as the momentum equation. Sometimes it's known as the force equation because if we multiply both sides by the density rho, you'll notice now that the units for each term are in force per unit volume. In plasma physics, we can equate the total force per unit volume by this expression where you'll notice the familiar Lorenz equation but now it's multiplied by number density n. The additional force term is the pressure gradient. If you do your analysis on that pressure gradient you'll also find out it has units of force per unit volume.